Normally when we order chicken tikka masala, bing, but we don't worry about it because it tastes good. But you can have it possibly better for this. That is but cheaper. So I have a feeling this is gonna be a bit of a challenge because this is a heavy spice recipe and spices kind of jack up the price of things. So not everybody has a spice on hands. So they gotta go buy one and then we gotta factor in the whole bottle. Ow. So we're gonna have to delete spices and somehow configure and mechanize this into a fully functioning robot of flavor. I don't know why I'm using mechanization and ro robotics to describe this, but I know that we can do it. We've never backed down from a challenge. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? This recipe is so fast, you might as well call it a god dang butt faster. First, in a large bowl, combine one cup or 240 grams of full fat yogurt, two teaspoons or six grams of kosher salt, one and a quarter tablespoon or 11 grams of garam masala. Oh, it's a fancy spice, Josh. Blah, blah, blah. Look, it encapsulates all the spices you need because then you don't have to buy like four, five, six, however many spices you need. One teaspoon or three grams of paprika, five cloves of garlic finely chopped, two inch knob of fresh ginger, grated. Mix all that together until thoroughly combined, then cut two pounds or 900 grams of boneless and skinless chicken thighs. Pause. Look, we all know chicken thighs thighs are the superior choice here, right? First off, it's cheaper than the breast. Second off, yeah, sure, use breast. But I'm sick of being overjoyed with a delightfully flavorful sauce, only to bite into a piece of compressed wood sawdust, like overcooked chicken breast. The thigh will save you from that, so please use it and enjoy the juicy tenderness and thank me later. Anyway, mix all that together and allow it to sit for 10 minutes at room temp, but ideally overnight in the fridge. Now get yourself a large saute pan or some sort of a large and deep skillet. You could also use a small pot. Look, this is the only cooking vessel you need to use here. So, you know, be kind of choosy, but it's fine. Add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan, heat over medium high until nearly smoking. Then add all your chicken in batches and sear for two to three minutes per side till you get some nice browning. Don't get all like, oh, I gotta cook the chicken all the way through. It's gonna get cooked later. So once everything's seared, remove all your chicken, add a touch more oil if needed, lower the heat to medium, add a mix of one large yellow onion, sliced, a two inch knob of ginger, thinly sliced, three cloves of garlic, also thinly sliced, season lightly with salt to draw that water out. It's gonna help it cook faster. And saute for three to five minutes or until all the vegetables are softened. Then add in one teaspoon or three grams of paprika, one teaspoon or three grams of cayenne powder, one tablespoon or nine grams of garam masala, two teaspoons or nine grams of granulated sugar, and saute until so fragrant you can barely just got dang help yourself. Then add a 15 ounce or 425 gram can of crushed tomatoes, stir that together, and let it reduce for five minutes. And this next step is optional. I don't want to see in the comments complaining, oh, you don't have a blender. Look, you'll literally be fine if you don't have one. Just don't blend it. Anyway, once reduced and all your vegetables are super soft, pour all that into a blender and blend on high speed until as smooth as physically possible. Then place it back into the pan or pot or whatever the hell you're using. Bring it back to a simmer, reduce the heat to low, add all of your cooked chicken, and simmer stirring occasionally for 10 minutes or until the chicken's cooked beautifully. Then stir in one cup or 240 milliliters of heavy whipping cream and reduce for seven to eight more minutes, stirring occasionally or till thickened. There's no other way to describe this other than voluptuous. Now season and taste with salt as needed and serve next to a nice big old chonker of plain steamed rice. Optionally, you can garnish with cilantro, but really you don't need the expenditure if you don't want to. And look, I'll be honest, this looks beautiful, but I did have to remove a couple of things that I'd usually put in here to keep the cost down because it's but cheaper. That's why we use garam masala. It has the majority of the flavors that you need, but if you want it even better and you happen to have it on hand, then I would suggest adding one teaspoon of ground cumin to the spice mix. But again, only if you have it on hand. That being said, can this still taste as good despite that for the sake of our wallets? Let's find out. So we have chicken tikka masala for this price right here. Let's just taste the damn thing. Wow, this is great. I mean, this is equally as good as our other chicken tikka masala recipe. I almost don't want to say it because all the people are like, yeah, cost benefit. I'm never going to make the other one again. But this one is just as good. Even with the reduction in spices, you get that strong, deeply flavored spice right to the mouth. It's creamy, but not too creamy. Mostly tomato-y, a little bit tart, a little bit spicy. And you got that umami from the chicken fat. If I ordered this chicken tikka masala and they gave it to me for $17, I'd be like, okay. But it was only this. But you want to know what else is cheaper? B-roll. 